One, two, three. Hello. Oh, my. That's weird. All right. Whoa, what's, what's going on here? Let's it's go back right. to the normal. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> what? Just go over that one. Oh, wait, there we go. go. Oh, wait, we're there. Hello, and welcome to X-Rated, the X-Men animated review show, where I like to screw up the intros as often as possible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tonight, we're glad that it's another one of our exclusive interviews. And our special guest, very special guest for this evening, uh, actor, poet, musician, time traveler. He's <laughs> mad, he's bad, and he's dangerous to know. Lawrence Bain. Hey. Hey, kids. How you doing? <laughs> anyone oh, that we're encourages, doing good. Anyone that encourages me to drink while interviewing them is, is the top interview in my book. Anyone that uh, prevents me from drinking during an interview becomes, you know, blacklisted. So oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. We, oh, we would never do that. Ne yeah, Thank never you. never the twain shall cross. <laughs> no, exactly. Oh, well, welcome to the show, Lawrence. Really, really happy to have you on. Man, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to still be in the X Men universe to this day, and uh, that's oh, yeah, that's uh, something I can only partially talk about, as you know. Yes, but, yes, uh, we've had a few other of your of your ilk on the show who uh, who are <laughs> you know who who have the red the red Disney uh, laser dot on their head, the back of their heads at all times. Oh, and let man. slide. Working for the mouse is hard, <laughs> to eat, man. Yeah, yeah well, we've we've heard he signs those NDAs in blood, so we don't want to mess with it. <laughs> My blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. South Park had a fairly uh, uh, a fairly uh, brutal version of Mickey Mouse that sort of I think isn't too far from the truth as far as like representing mm -hmm. the brand and making sure nobody messes that up. So. Well, I'm 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 62 years old, and I saw I saw Mickey get lampooned on T-shirts during the 70s. That mm -hmm. was some really harsh shit. Yeah. You know? However, yeah. I, it would, just to put it out there, though, when uh, you know I got took on for 97 again, uh, you know we had to meet everybody, and mm -hmm. the, the the biggest joy of that was meeting people I'd worked with in studio way back in the day when we did TAS. Mm -hmm. And now we're 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 uh, we're in sensitivity training, and we're we're being told, <laughs> you know, to be sensitive and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, <laughs> how's the how's the sensitivity training going? <laughs> how, how does it go? It, it, it <laughs> yeah, how's it going? Well, it, between me and Cal Dodd, like we we kind of kind of held sway over that little class. <laughs> Just saying, what well, do you think we're assholes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I think. I think I we're like, breaking ground here, though. I don't think it had been previously announced that you're back for 97. Uh, well, see, that's as far as I can go with it, though, boys. Oh, well, that's, that's awesome. That's though. All, I'm, I'm, that's I'm happy awesome. to hear that much. That's I mean, fantastic. Yeah, we're just happy to hear that as fans because you know, there, there's no season, other table. Second season, been signed up for the second season now, 97. Oh, but awesome. Other beautiful, than that, beautiful. Other than that, man, the mouse will kill me. So, yes, Dan, he did, but that's all he can say. So, once uh, I realized, once I realized that, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, aid and and and, um, mm -hmm. and the rest of the cast had been, you know, told, been been allowed to say that they were back. I'm allowed to say I'm back. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just not allowed to say as to whom. Oh, oh. No, okay. Just well, play. that's interesting because yeah, you were I, the I, voice of Cable, the I voice was. of Eric the Red. Yes, and oh, that is Captain true. America. Captain America. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. So What's he could be any of those it, or none. Uh, it could be. It should be. It <laughs> be. But I we don't want to get you in any it. trouble. We understand. <laughs> no. we understand. I feel like we're we're treading in those waters already. Yeah, we don't. We, we don't want to get you in trouble. Big, I was a big utilitarian <laughs> voice back in the in the first series too. Mm -hmm. You know, I would go in there and do the main character Cable. And then, you know, all of a sudden, there's me and uh, Cal going back to World War II times doing Wolverine and Captain America. Mm -hmm. And I did lots of utilitarian voices, you know, mm -hmm. some guy screaming in a crowd, lots of walla, voice walla, mm -hmm. because I got, I got lots of range as far as, you know, disguising who my main character is. And that okay. was, given, yeah. 
Hit me. Question then. So yeah. you're do you're you're doing these uh little stray voices on X Men, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so are you the guy who's doing all the impressions, like Jack Nicholson and like Judge Wapner and like oh, like there's somebody in the first season who's doing all of these impressions and they're very obvious. Oh and, my god, that might have been Cecil. That might have know. been uh, it might have been Cecil. You know, there's long there's always Craig. some some ver various punk in a bar that's like, you know, I'm going to make this shot. You know, and like, there's, it's just, you there's, know. There's, yeah, I did a lot of those. I yeah, oh, of that's very cool. Okay. I, I, I think I did one celebrity impression, but I think most of those were Cecil. You'll have to get somebody else. And, you know, man, long may he reign. The people we lost, Norm Spencer. Norm was a great friend of mine and and a scoundrel. You yeah. know, and oh. I, and uh, you know, I'm a fellow scoundrel. Norm and I got along quite well. <laughs> I can't share one story, but uh, I can share one story where we were on. Norm wanted to get into on screen acting in the biggest way, but he was too fucking handsome. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he did some great stage work with that face and that voice. Do you know his license plate said? His license plate, personalized license plate in Ontario said voice. <laughs> it's a measure of the guy's it's a measure of the guy's sort of modesty yeah, because yeah, really, yeah. For many of us he was voice one mm -hmm. yeah. he had checks from stuff that he did where the, it would actually turn over and it would be it's check number one for you again for this norm the guy was amazing <laughs> you know, an amazing actor and and we did a we did a series called top cops which was based on true cop stories and norm got shot and he fell down and he fell down in such a way that i wish i could demonstrate but he fell down in such a way that one of his legs was still cocked up in the air <laughs> and the director said norm let your leg drop <laughs> <laughs> and River Mortis like, hasn't set in yet <laughs> i'd already blown the scene i was fucking cracking up so loud no <laughs> Norm was, Norm was a sweet man. He came to um, my uh, Halloween party as the Grim Raper. And I, I, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what the uh, let me wow. tell you what the costume was: basic Grim Reaper gear and a 15-inch rubber dildo that he just hung out the front of the rope. Oh wow! That oh was <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love hearing that's those sort of stories. Deep sense of humor. Nice humanizing. Oh those man, of Norm was funny, yeah. man, oh, and he was man. relentlessly funny. And he didn't give a uh, shit in rooms yeah. full of people. There's, you know, you run across people in our trade. I can't say the name, but there's a guy in our trade who was like a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. And Norm, just every time we were in a waiting room, and I miss the waiting rooms, dude. You know, uh, since the pandemic, I don't get 17 of my buddies in a room when we're auditioning because mm -hmm. there's no competition in voice, man. Yeah. We yeah. just walk in the room and go, baby, good to see you, right? But there was this one guy, and, and Norm would just, flay this guy alive you just look at him and go oh you're talking bullshit again <laughs> everybody knew he was talking bullshit but we just go he's so he, this guy was so regularly a chronic liar that we just go yeah okay pal whatever but norm every time you're a fucking liar <laughs> i love norm uh got too soon all for right sure. yeah, yeah. All right, oh well uh generally how this this seems to operate is i'll, I'll uh, ask you some questions about your life and career and then Devin has them and i'll lie ones. about it actually yeah, as as expected <laughs> Go ahead, and, man. And uh, Davin will uh, will interject with uh, what do we refer to them as? Davin is just weird, weird, weird. Not weird. It's uh, random questions. Random questions. Random questions. I have random questions. All right. So, uh, so where were you? Where were you born, Lawrence? Where did, where I did you begin? I was born about fourteen blocks away from where I am right now. I was born at the corner of Church and Bloor in well, Toronto, oh, yes. um, in the Grace hospital salvation army hospital 1960 6 47 a.m on november wow. the 11th <laughs> i don't think anyone's gotten that specific before well yeah. you know somebody said you were born on 11 11 and some mystic in newfoundland said i'm gonna read your charts and <laughs> uh, so 11 11 apparently is a big bloody deal and okay fine <laughs> but uh yeah i was born there yes 6.47 a.m., November 11th. My mother said she heard taps being played in the uh, parking lot by the Salvation Army Band for the Six Million War Dead and thought I was dead. Oh, oh my God. Wow. 
Well, thank God she was. She was wrong. very high yeah. at the time. You know. <laughs> they, they just back then it was drugs sharp and <laughs> give you the good stuff. <laughs> oh, and what what did your uh, what did your folks do? Or what were uh, their my mother with? was um, a, a Bell telephone operator. Man. Oh wow, that's a Sitting job you don't see that those often anymore. Multi corded uh, switchboards <laughs> like this with a bouffant this high, with oh, wow. several other bouffants that high in a row, and she'd take me to work, and I would get fawned over by these women and i'd leave there with about five different kinds of lipstick on my face <laughs> and um and my mother was that and my father was the concierge at the king edward hotel oh wow, wow. which meant he knew all the wrong people yes of course <laughs> and 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 supplied them with all the wrong stuff uh he passed, I was a concierge uh, once myself <laughs> were you were you but yeah. I, think, I think back in the day when you had to wear a suit Mm -hmm. And you were, that was it. The old man would get, you know, approached by people uh, and asked many different questions. My father was actually raised in Montreal. Oh, and he yeah. was, uh, he was, uh, we're talking about my stepfather here. If you want to ask about my biological father, we'll get there. But my stepfather raised me from age five. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who introduced me to all things entertainment. Mm. He would sit down. He'd let me watch movies on uh, Channel 7 late night movies here in Toronto, out of Buffalo. Irv Weinstein, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Yeah. That guy. <laughs> but I, I, I watched The Wolfman. I watched Dracula. I watched The Mummy. And my father was an ardent film fan, and he was an ardent jazz buff. And uh, kind of raised me up good, you know? Sounds like my kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, no, mine, mine too. Good values, <laughs> good values, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, did uh, what did you always like? I mean, you're an obviously an animated person. Was, was uh, acting in, in theater and stage is that all something that you wanted to do from a young age, or is that something that came later in life? You know, it's funny, my mother, um, you know, wanted to be the, the most notorious stage mother in the world, and she uh, <laughs> she, she saw the animated stuff you're talking about when uh -huh. I was five and six. Well, game and knows fact, game. I mean, I, I recognize and the it. fact that I was a very advanced reader very early. Mm -hmm. You know, reading was something that I glommed onto very quickly. And she took me to a talent agency in Toronto when I was seven or eight. And they said, he's too brown. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm indigenous and I am a Scots and I am Icelandic and I am. <laughs> I'm I'm Cree, Scots, mm -hmm. Indigenous, Icelandic. You know, I, I'm the result of some very strange goings on in the Bering Strait way yes. back. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> but I was too brown as a child. I, I as I got older, I, I got less brown. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I I heard every racial slur by the time I was ten in school. Every single one, guys. Really. You know, wow. and it didn't it didn't harden me. It made me think, wow, I'm pretty cut. Damn special! They got so many names. <laughs> wow! Yeah, this guy's got range. He could be everything. <laughs> and I still do. But yeah. now, you know, because there's an exclusivity going on in the business now, mm -hmm. I don't go out for Hispanic roles anymore. And I can do ten kinds of Hispanic. Um, I go out for <laughs> Russian roles now because you know they're fucking villains again. Yeah. And um, and uh, and 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 indigenous is I, I ride waves of indigenous because. You know, indigenous popularity comes and goes in films. Now, right now, of course, the new one coming out uh, with Brad Pitt and I think uh, the Scorsese one is it? Scorsese? Oh, uh, yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon, fantastic. Yeah, it's and Scorsese, in, in yeah. Canada, Jennifer Podemsky is uh, also doing some great stuff. I've worked with Jennifer before, but uh, I've always seen it as oh, it's the brand new Renaissance. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're getting another indigenous wave. Mm -hmm. I, I, I won an award from First Americans in the Arts for my portrayal of Russell Means, who was one of the founding members of um, uh, the American Indian Movement. Mm -hmm. By the way, the first organization recognized by the FBI as an internal terrorist organization. Really? Yeah, yeah I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Well, so it's funny. I, I, do a film called, I do a film called Lakota Woman. Siege at Wounded Knee. Also with my spiritual father, August Schellenberg, who was in that as well. And we film it in, in Rapid City and we film it on location at the Rosebud place where the siege took place. And we are followed around the city by little vans with radars. And <laughs> <laughs> Flower vans? 
<laughs> and it was produced by Jane Fonda. Oh, wow. And on the oh. rap party night, I got to slow dance with Jane Fonda. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's she was a good wonderful. night. She was wonderful. Yeah. All right. All right. I blather on. Ask your No, question. that's awesome. Actually, no, I'm, no, I'm that's how we up. like it. <laughs> this is how we like it. Uh, before I let yeah. dive into a random one, I was going to ask you, I noticed your first credit is uh, on one of my favorite bands, music video, uh, yeah. Pink Floyd. So how did that come about? Okay. I've got this story too. down to a T, so okay. I won't even ramble, okay? All right. I go out I go out one night with my best friend, and we get fucking hammered. And we're getting up in the morning, and, 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 and I'm, it's like it's a Saturday as well, so it's very rare. And it's 9 o'clock, and I'm just hungover. Our, our eyes are bleeding. We're so hungover. <laughs> and the phone rings, and it's my brand-new first talent agent's. Mm -hmm. Margot Lane. They've never called me for anything because, you know, I submitted a bullshit resume. I hadn't mm -hmm. done anything <laughs> yeah. except some except some plays at the University of Toronto. But I padded out with other nonsense. Anyway, they called me, would you like to go to an audition for Pink Floyd? It's an audition for a music video. And my head is just throbbing, man. Like there's weasels eating my skull. But <laughs> Floyd, Pink Floyd comes through and I go, Pink Floyd video? And my friend he chirps up. He goes, "You gotta go, man. You gotta of course, go. of course." So he was I right. Go. I go. I enter a room half the size of a football stadium, and it's packed with actors. All right, it's packed with people in aviator gear. There's about <laughs> seven hundred children there. There's um, there's there's native people or native representatives of people because mm -hmm. back then white people would go in and try to do natives too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I am just sure. I don't know what I look like because I feel like a bag of stomped assholes. <laughs> but I go in and, and I sit there, I sit there for a while, and I'm sitting and I'm sitting and I can't, I can't, I can't do this. And then they call my name and I go into the room, and there's about 30 people behind. 17 tables all joined <laughs> together and they're looking at me and I, I my first thing I ever did was mime man so what I did was because they ignored me I standing there and like dang, 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 dang. and I just sort of did a fake lean mm -hmm. and a fake drink <laughs> and went fuck you like this <laughs> and, I, and I walked out and I walked out and then <clears throat> somebody comes and grabs me what's your name Lawrence Bain I got the job, man. <laughs> I got the job. It was the strangest thing because I was there with two really good actors, uh, Billy Maristy, and um, I'll remember his name in a minute. And we were real natives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to the hotel to do the audition. Again, strange ground for me. Really? We're auditioning in a hotel? Mm -hmm. And we're standing in front of three elevators to go up to the suite to wait to, you know, re-audition. You know? And I said to the guys, I said, whoever, whatever elevator door opens, you win. Okay. We all left. Okay. <laughs> My elevator door didn't open. And it just, that's, it, actors do all sorts of, you know, superstitious thing to take the pressure off themselves. Mm -hmm. I went, mm -hmm. okay, that's it. I'm out. Fine. So I was just, I was going up there to do the thing. I got called in and I met Storm Thorgerson. You want to look that up, kids. Storm Thorgerson mm -hmm. designed Yes albums. He designed all the Pink Floyd albums, and he directed their first works mm -hmm. on camera. And I meet Storm Thorgerson, and he says, "Oh, you fuck! He's a fucking, he's a cockney bastard, and he might, he might be just as hungover as I was the day before." <laughs> and he's, what, "What were you Indian?" I went, "Yeah, I'm a whole fucking tribe, man." And he, <laughs> <laughs> Laughs. He goes, oh, here's what I want you to do. Yeah, take my keys. Throws me the hotel keys because they were keys still. And he goes, I want you to come into the hotel room and then I just want you to discover me here and then I want to see your reaction. Okay. So well, I go this is going to have a twist. <laughs> side and then I open the door to walk in and I he's right there and I ignore him. I go over to the bar fridge and I grab two bottles of the little mini Jack and I go yeah. and I look over him and I threw the keys at his fucking head as hard as I could. And he went, oh, okay, right. you're hired. You're hired. <laughs> and, I was, and I was in Calgary the next day, man. Wow. And he Shit. was wonderful. Mm. Storm, storm, storm was wonderful. So oh, that's, that's how I got into that. That was the first award-winning video 
in the world of you know that kind of you know that milieu of of music appreciation um i think it played for like endlessly on on <clears throat> mtv and stuff like that and i was walking through a back when they used to sell TVs by the tons, I was mm-hmm. walking through the Eaton Center and there was like 75 TVs and I looked over and there was my face <laughs> doing this video. And um, that started it. And then I got a real agent, a wonderful agent named Kerry Follis, who could bullshit better than me and got me way good roles. So. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. You're doing Art. auditions all wrong. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> don't give a shit you want to do auditions if you're really seriously doing auditions it's the 92nd lawrence baines show yeah you walk in there and you own that fucking place you're not nervous about it you walk in and go this is about me for yep. 90 yep. seconds mm-hmm. and then you doff your cap and you forget about it go home anytime Next i've ever gotten me. any kind of a role it's because i uh i didn't really like I didn't, it's like, whenever I think I didn't get it is when I get it, you know, whatever I, I'm just like, eh, you know, maybe, maybe you I never was know, man. Yeah, you I know. Walking there thinking you did some gold or, and, yeah. and then, and then they hire you when you walk out thinking you shit the bed. Exactly. It's uh any, any role I've gotten on a TV show or whatever, it's always been fairly, uh, I've always been like, I derf that. And then I'll get a call a couple of days later and be like, what the hell? Okay. You know, like, so maybe there's something right. to be said about just the, the naturalist. You got a stuff. distinctive look, man. There's, yeah. It's like, yeah. you're going to get the role because you <laughs> yeah. look the way you do. Yeah. I get a lot of, I get a lot of calls for criminals and uh, security guards and cops guy. and yeah. Yesterday bikers. I had a goatee, man. You yeah. know, it had to come off yeah. for something I'm doing tonight, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can show. It. We we're, we're we're goatee friendly actually. It's all true. We sure are. we're facial hair Clearly. friendly. Clearly it's a, we're, I'm, a, I'm among yes. your suit friends. It's good. Yes, yes. All yes. right, well, David, let me throw a random question out at us. Okay, yep. well, I'll start very random. So you were you grew up in Toronto in nineteen, or you were born in Toronto nineteen sixty, right? Yeah. So here's a question I have: Do you remember the nineteen sixty seven Stanley Cup? Because I heard, I heard it was a myth. In, in, <laughs> so, it's certainly been long enough to become a myth for sure yeah i don't i don't remember i wasn't uh i was not raised hockey i in fact got into hockey in about the last 10 years i don't know never no never time to be a hockey. leafs fan i'm a bad yeah. canadian i've never been a big <laughs> hockey guy either so yeah. i'm gullible enough let's say to yeah. to, to think Me that too. you know they could happen but yeah, I'm, yeah i liked how they played but sports yeah. is out of my purview. It's such a personal thing to me. I have a ridiculously huge TV and I sit in front of it and I scream like a freak watching <laughs> sports. So it's a good cathartic, man. You know, it gets oh, yeah. rid of other shit. It is. It kind of, I've always sort of realized that. Like I used to kind of tease people and they'd be like, we won last night. Like, oh, we, we won last we night. Did you know? we yeah. yeah, we we did. Oh, excellent. I didn't know we <laughs> won. Fantastic. <laughs> when is our check arriving for our victory? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that yeah. check. But uh, anyway, Davin, you go ahead. That was, you, you can get that uh, another okay. random question. All right, all right. Um, well, here's one I tend to ask our guests in some fashion or another. Um, were you familiar with Cable or the X Men before you got the role? Not at all. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> not, not at all. Um, it was, in fact, about the third animated thing I'd voiced. I knew I I recognized X Men. Mm-hmm. I recognized that. I've never been into comics. Um, I recognized that X Men was significant in as much as. I'd heard it before, and if it, if it if it if it gets through my you know filters, uh, yeah, okay, it was important. Now I don't think any of us, any of us knew how significant it was at the beginning. I don't think I, I don't think it's possible. I think all of us thought it was just a gig, but we got directed by people like Dan Hennessy, and we you know we we heard from L.A. about you know the, we were doing something important. And I think we just, first of all, the most fun for all of us at the beginning, and I'll dare them to deny it, is that it was ensemble playing in a studio. So that's like the three of us right now. And this would be the Zoom version where I got to do my line. You do your line. You do your line. And that was fun because we were in the studio doing it live. So yeah. the energy the energy was magnificent. 
That's got to be the best way to voice act. I mean, I can't imagine just doing it without hearing the other people. It must be tough. I did. I did gargoyles in L.A. with pretty much the entire crew of the New Enterprise. Oh wow! You know, oh, and wow. and 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 one special person, and long may he reign, Frank Welker. Oh, awesome! Oh, yes. All right. I got. They're gonna say Keith David was gonna say so voice. I got to be part of a voice with Frank Welker. He had to do a three-headed Hydra. And the right. director, said, oh. uh, for, so what do you want to do? And he and he and he nudges me, and I'm sitting right beside him. He goes, nudges, me. you want to do one of these voices? <laughs> Sorry, man. I've met more famous people than Frank Welker, but I mm. nearly fucking melted right in my seat because <laughs> I, I adore him. I worship the guy, fantastic right. voice. Oh man, I, iconic. I said, I said can I the best? <laughs> I said, Can I do a high voice? He goes, Well, let's hear it. So I'm <laughs> yeah, you do that. I'll do the low one. <laughs> and I, I, it was a three-headed Hydra, and of that three-headed Hydra, Lawrence Bain was one of the voices with Frank Welker. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's I was amazing, honored yeah. beyond belief, man. So, I, back, getting back to us in the studio, we knew each other, some of us, prior to going in there as actors. Voice was a just a brand new burgeoning thing at that time. At that time, when we were all landing these voice gigs there was probably about a thousand of us in toronto now there's fucking ten thousand of us <laughs> right and um i don't think the quality's gotten any better to be quite honest you mm -hmm. know there's some people that i haven't heard before but there's some people out there like ellie ray hennessy like oh my god the, the, the people i know and love in it are still in it mm -hmm. there's other people doing it but there's a core group of people out there that i am you know absolutely loyal to Awesome. Wow. It's interesting though, but they none of our other voice acting guests mentioned that you guys were doing it as an ensemble in the room. And no, it's because they're egotistical. We should have asked that. <laughs> and egotists, all of them. No, we all fed oh, off well. each other. You know, and no, and no, they're all really incredible talents unto themselves. But for them not yeah. to mention that we would sit there and howl in between takes. And no, say stuff. Never heard that. That's wow. selfish, selfish, really. Now, since you had such a uh, such a, a great relationship with uh, with Norman Spencer, did uh, were you aware of the connection of your two characters? The cable was was the son of of uh, of Scott Summers when you were doing the show. I compartmentalize a great deal. Yeah, what I do, and and because, like I just said about auditions, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's the dig me show for mm -hmm. 90 seconds so when i've got dan hennessy and he's pulled me in to do something that is strictly just me mm -hmm. i don't know who i'm talking to until he tells me mm -hmm. and i will tell you that those details kind of get a little hazy over the years no that's fine okay <laughs> i mean I, I never i never i didn't give a, a trivial line to anything but mm -hmm. i sometimes didn't know the import of the line mm -hmm. yeah the importance will come later and i'm, I'm sure even maybe the like I'm not sure in the comics at that point if that was something that was freely known when that's coming again, out. And again, yeah, that's that's yeah, not so. something that I ever pursued. But what I always did in the studio was was realize that if when I was there alone to do pickup voices, and that was generally why I was called in alone, was to do utilitarian voices mm -hmm. or hang around after you know we'd release some other people and me do you know four or five more. That uh, it, it's never lost on me that the quality of the work never went down and that the connectivity of the cast was rock solid. Well, I have a, a, I'll have a follow up question then. What, for, for Cable, was there an inspiration for you? Is there a voice that you had in your head when you're doing the character? I was... opened my mouth and I said, <laughs> I got these from those Genosian goons. <laughs> I rolled, it, I, I rolled it in the back of my neck for the for the first time. I, I thought for a second, I can sound, you know, I got a good baritone, mm -hmm. but what I wanted to do was swallow. Mm -hmm. I wanted to swallow, and I didn't want to sound like I was breathing. <laughs> That's Hope awesome. Yeah, and, and, and so that was it. That was Dan going, stay with that. You know? And nailed That's it, fantastic. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, that's a great voice. It's like the first thing you hear from Cable is the coolest thing ever, and I remember to this day. Well, it's like, it's like you were just like, I'm the wild man of Borneo. I'm like, the <laughs> wild man of Borneo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I love it. It's so cool. Because I was yeah. like, really, am I the wild man from Borneo? I mean, I've heard that thing before. Like, I'm learning the words, and I am really selective. They give us, back then, not the whole script. Mm. They give you your mm. sides. 
you know, mm-hmm. and if anybody else comes into the room, then you're reading off against it. But if it's just you, it's just your words. It's just you, that. That's what you're reading off paper. There's probably and no then, room for improvisation at that time in, in animation, was there? You said the lines and that was it? No, then, yeah, man, I didn't think so. No, no, no. We, it was, it, the process it took so long you couldn't, you couldn't reanimate I, if you had to. So. Well, I think, I think part of the magic of what we did was the process did not take that long. Mm. I thought that what the actors were doing at all times was just so immediate. And, you know, nobody was doing 10 takes, man. We were doing two. We were doing mm-hmm. three, you know, and they and they would. And, you know, the magic of the studio is that if we do a whole take with five actors and they like your take and that take and that take, they'll keep it. But they'll make us all do it again to bring the other ones up to speed, to bring mm. them up to the same, you know, quality. That's a technical thing that I, I know happens. But the beauty of the way we did it was that it was like, okay, take two, everybody, you know? Mm. And I, I, I really, yeah, there's, there's no getting past it. It was almost over before it started, that kind of ensemble animation acting. I, I did it literally for like two years. And then it was, and then it was, you came into a room and you, the stripes went together and you read and that was it. I mean, I've been doing that for Bakugan for the last two years. Right. And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and it's rough because that stuff is a test of how you can get all that shit in there yeah. once it's over. But back then, we were, doing, we were doing radio plays, man. That's what it was like. I did CBC radio plays and loved the fact. I mean, I did live ones, too. Those were nerve-wracking. No, I'd but imagine. Before, Recorded CBC radio plays were were it was it was stagecraft. It was it was listening to the actors. I miss I I think I think there's still a dedicated group of podcasters out there doing a modern day stage plays a radio plays, but I I would like to see it become more popular. It was it was such a cool thing, and now that podcasts are such a thing, I think it, it does really a, a lot of room to keep that tradition going. I so, think so too. Yeah, it was so good. All right, Devin, what do you got? Well, I'm. It really shows, though, on that show. Like, we've been going through all the episodes of this show, and there's a lot of things that kind of uh, stand out as being quite good and excellent in that show. But it's really the voice acting that carries that show. Like, even if there's a bad episode, we're like, well, that story was just awful. There, there's still, like, a bunch of zingers from all the characters that just make you smile the whole time anyway. So it's just it was really... It's Here's one, there's only a few examples of your like nerds like us that grew up watching this of shows that really captured the feel of the comics in such a in such a, a, a pure way. And X Files or X Men was a, is a big example of that. Um, one, one of the few, there's only a few else out around the same time, like Batman was a good one too in the 90s. Um, but you know, there's only a few things that you can really take the comic, flip through it, and see it represented on screen as 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 closely as you can get from the books themselves. And I think that's part of why people yeah. love it so much. I'm just going to tip my hat to Canada too for that. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm, no, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you without, without any sort of modesty that Canada produces the best, best voice actors in the world. No, oh, agreed. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, there's no possible way I, I could have gotten gigs in LA had I not been riding on the coattails of X Men, mm-hmm. you know oh. that was the first time I met the mouse. You know when I did cartwheels <laughs> and stuff like that, and yeah, we're the best. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, yeah. even the ones we spoke to from the show, like uh, Lenore. I, I live in Toronto, Nova Scotia, and uh, ah. Lenore Zan was our MLA for like a decade. So um, <laughs> you know, when my wife graduated from uh, college, uh, I was at the. I think it was recently after she was elected. I was sitting in the audience listening to her speech because uh, yeah. the the MLA was doing a speech, and I remember thinking, "Man, that voice sounds familiar," <laughs> you know. And then, you yeah. know, and then later on realizing who it was, I was like, "Holy crap, that's funny." You can hear it. She's not southern, obviously, but you can no, hear no, it. No, no, but it's so smoky it's whiskey, yeah. smoky yeah. whiskey through honey. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. North's got yeah, that's North, a good description North, of her voice. The North's got the the most enticing male killing voice. Yeah, I agreed. She does. Oh, yeah. Beautiful person too. Beautiful person. Yeah, we we had her on the show. We had a great conversation. Ah, excellent. So, excellent. Yeah. It's like when we had her on the show too. I'm just like, how is your voice not aged? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like 
Yeah, yeah. Funny. Yeah, even the, the the folks that like we've heard that are you know all the people that have come back like sometimes they'll slip like yourself into doing the voice and it's like it, it's seamless like it's you think after years mm-hmm. and age that that you would probably lose some of it but it, it seems like you don't miss a step. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of them is is because those folks take care of themselves, and <laughs> yeah. a lot of and and for me, it's because I'm taking exactly the same care of myself <laughs> yeah you were yeah, as little as you were back then it's just the same I went into a studio, I consistency went into a studio. i went into a studio to do something and um i was on a break and i went out and i was eating a cheese sandwich and this little keener studio intern came out and goes oh cheese is bad for your voice i said yeah yeah i've heard that and whiskey's bad for your voice too right he goes, yeah. I said, well, this is how I got my fucking voice. <laughs> Cheese sandwiches and whiskey. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, whenever I do stage work, uh, the, there's always food out, out back, and you know, there's always a cheese thing, and everyone avoids it because they're afraid stage, it's going to screw their voice. Stage work scares the shit out of me. Stage work. I'm doing a stage reading of uh, of a play by uh, a, a local luminary, C.C. Humphreys. It's called Shakespeare's Rebel. And I'm reading for I'm. It's a staged reading, so mm-hmm. it's it's formal informal because there'll be some blocking. But I'm I'm voicing William Shakespeare. Oh wow! <laughs> and um, no, well I I know why I got it because I'm kind of intense, mm-hmm. but I'm also kind of funny. And CC mm-hmm. grabbed onto that. But doing stage work, that's very daunting. I did a play mm-hmm. about four years ago for a two week run, and I was terrified more than ever that I was going to lose that voice Mm. because again when you do stage you have a director going we're not hearing you up there yeah oh yeah yeah it's always about projection 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 and like this is stage right with your voice and this is voice in a studio Mm. you can put it all into that mic right there and everybody's going to hear what you do and you can be intense and a little louder but you don't have to be much louder you just have to be but all of this, mm-hmm. the intimacy that you have to share when you're having an intimate moment still has got to reach the gods, man. And that mm-hmm. shit scares me. It really does. Yeah, it's, it's, it's da- I've been doing it a long time. It's daunting. I still get incredibly nervous when I do shows, but, uh, oh. Um, I have another. You got a good voice. You got a good rounded voice. So <laughs> yes. I would, I've always wanted to do uh, voice work, but it's the, they don't do a lot of animated stuff out here in, in my area, but I've always... I, where I sent where are you? Where, what area? Where are you in your area? Nova, Sco- Nova Scotia. Northern Nova Scotia. Oh, the wind just right, shifted right. direction, so I'm breathing in forest fire. Right well, now. you know yeah, what? A... I hope maybe I can shake your hand because I just auditioned for a show out there. So. Oh, can you say what one? Because oh, I... No, I cannot, of course. Because I've i been doing... Oh. I've auditioned for a lot, but I've done background on a lot, too, so I'm... I'm, I'm I, think you, I think day. there's a part for you. I think there's a part for you on this. Oh, we should send it to me. I would love I, to do I, I, it. I, I, I <laughs> Tell your people to call my people. Call my people. Mm-hmm. I, I've, and I've, I've done some lovely stuff out there. Well, if I you're do. out here, let us know. We'll definitely mm-hmm. meet of up. Course from here. Yeah. Drink some whiskey. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll bring a bottle. I got lots. Fantastic. So, um, my career just keeps me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> hanging out with the podcast guys in Elephant in Nova Scotia. <laughs> this is the tippity top. This is yeah, it's all downhill it. from here. No, I love well, it. well <laughs> I'm skimming through your uh, disco- or your discography, my God. Your uh, your filmography. That too. Uh, I know that too, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, every time we have people on the show that do work on the on on X-Men there's we always make jokes like anytime we talk about a new voice actor that pops up on the show they've always yeah. been on the same litany of canadian tv shows there's uh, always there's <laughs> always forever night there's always street new legal. south there's always kung fu Legend <laughs> continues there's always yep. street legal oh, yeah. fx RoboCop. series eng robocop yep. um forever uh, night we, we, forever night we used to call that cop sucker <laughs> no, that the idea the idea of that show was good like it, it's ripe for a remake i'm surprised no one's done it yet because like that concept like a vampire cop only working at night i feel like it's dumb enough that it's gonna netflix will pick it up and it'll become really popular for some reason yeah yeah it's a but, lot uh, stuck in a dryer it'll be back but one one i did see pop up that actually raised my eyebrow was murder she wrote what was uh oh, what was wow. working with angela lansbury like legend what a what a trip that was like literally my agent carrie follows who i retired 
<laughs> did, did they did did they want to? Because of all the money. Gary yeah, yeah. yeah. Gary was the one who, who went to bat for me for so many things. Oh, awesome. She was wonderful. She's now a nurse. Oh. So I said to her, I said, so now you're taking care of truly troubled people. Yeah. And it, maybe like, someday it'll come around to work for you again. Okay. I got called. She goes, you're going to LA. And I went, okay, nice. I go down every, you know, for three months, every year anyway. Why am I going now off the three? She goes, you've been hired to be on Murder, She Wrote. Angela Lansbury saw a clip or something and I was hired. Wow. And I, I think she really had an active role as far as that kind of stuff. Oh goes. my god, executive very producer, hands on. executive yeah. producer, her son directed me. And oh. and and we get there, and Angela is, is the executive producer, and we're in the Malibu Canyon and it's scorching hot, and we're waiting for the Wranglers to clear the area that I'm supposed to walk through so that I don't get bitten by a rattlesnake. <laughs> like they're trying to clear out snakes and stuff like that. Angela's sitting in her chair, she's got her. You know, umbrella over her. And she swore, and I was in love. She goes, how long is it going to take to set up this fucking scene? <laughs> and I just loved her. Now, my character was named George Creech. And we, we line up to do our first shot. And she turns to me and she says, well, what do you think, Mr. Cheech? <laughs> and I went, I don't know, maybe we should get some pot and get high or something. Right? <laughs> and she fucking knew the reference, man. Oh, wow. She, That's she awesome. That's and good. Said, oh, I said, cheats. I said, cheats. I went, you did, did, honey. So let's go get high. And she's howling, laughing. Oh, that's awesome. We did our scene together. Our last scene together, we clean up the, you know, the, it comes to the, uh, you know, the, the denouement where she figures it out. Mm -hmm. And we're in a variety store set up <coughs> back at the studio. <clears throat> and I said, well, then that's that's just fine. And on an impulse, and you don't do this these days, although Angela would handle it these days too. I, I, I grabbed her hand and I held it up like this and I put my arm around her waist and we shot, we, we tangoed off the set. <laughs> I fell in love. I fell in love with her. I, I fell bet. In love. Sounds like she did too. Yeah, we had a good time. I've got two pictures I share every now and then on Facebook where she's looking at me going, here's some piece of work. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I got hair down to there, right? I mean, and it's my real hair back then. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Oh, I miss my hair. Yeah, <laughs> well, my, me too. And Long you time. too, fuckers, got enough to spare, at least, you know, down here. Yeah, not up here. There's Our a reason why you too. this. Yeah. I, gotta... I just hide it for Andre's sake. Day. Just, Why does it migrate it. <laughs> that way? <laughs> well, one thing I did see in your your uh, your filmography that uh, <laughs> every once in a while you'll come across, especially with voice actors, you guys do so much cartoons, and there's so many, so many out there, like direct to video yeah. things or whatever. There was one that I, I had to I had to do a, a bit more researching. Is it, it raised my eyebrow the second I saw it? Was it the uh, was it the Adventures of Young Moby Dick? Which is like a like a child series about like a young Ishmael like teaming up with a friendly young Moby Dick. I was like, talk about something that really missed the point of the source material. By like, you mean the whale? Yeah, no, oh, it's like it's like, like, Ishmael it's like and a, the whale. It's like a young boy named Ishmael befriends this whale, and he goes on a oh ship. My God. And, you know, it's. It's, I, it's, look, they I didn't read tell you, as much as you looked it up, I tried to forget it. <laughs> it made me. I was like, "What is this?" Like, think of all the things that could a children's movie could be made out of. Moby there Dick. Was, come on. There was there was a, a bunch of so religious uh, based animated stuff mm. we did. A lot of people from X Men did it as well, mm -hmm. including the, uh, well. well uh, when I did my dad, the rock star, I, I did that with Don Franks. Mm. Don I Franks that show. That was a great is, show. Is, is an inimitable scoundrel and you know, doesn't give do. yeah. actually, and, it's uh, funny because we uh, we watched, uh, I'm a big fan of the movie, um, um, My Bloody Valentine, which they filmed yeah, in yeah. Nova Scotia, and Franks yeah. is in it as the police chief. And oh, when God. I remember watching, watching the movie recently because I did a big like 30 or 40th anniversary screening of it with the guy that played the killer in it here in uh, Cape Breton, where they filmed it. Yeah. And uh, I remember just watching it, going, "Oh man, it's Don Franks!" Like it was so cool. It's been a million Don, years since I've seen it. I totally forgot he was he was in both. And Don and I were on uh, La Femme Nikita for three seasons as well. Right. He was on it from the beginning. Oh. I did three seasons as a as a guy named Davenport, mm, and uh, <laughs> I always thought that that's a 
was perfect because I was basically talking furniture. <laughs> but, uh, I, just, I just thought, you know, Davenport was the love child of, uh, you know, the two at the top. But uh, Don and I had a hoot there because that was the first time I ever went to anything that was like resembling a Comic-Con or anything mm -hmm. like that. We went to a convention about Nikita. And it was oh, wow. they have full conventions for that. Insane! Wow, in Quebec there was somewhere? about seven hundred people at this hotel, out the airport strip in Toronto. Oh, and I was, I was, while I was on the series, I was voted second sexiest next to Ray Dupuis, and oh, so wow. I had to go for that, you know, because I was lonely. Of course, and I went. <laughs> I, went I went to this thing, and there was like four hundred women lining up for Roy and me to sign stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a good I was I was, assigned, I was assigned <laughs> a former SAS hulking British brute <laughs> as bodyguard. Oh nice. And I needed wow. him, man. I needed Ooh. him. Because a woman came up and she started talking to me and I said, "Here's what I'm going to there was a semicircle, you know, um <clears throat> bench or 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 um, you know, place in a restaurant, you know, the semicircular tables where you sit down." Mm -hmm. alcove kind of thing and i seated myself in the middle so that they had to slide in and slide out and and the uh, this sas guy was gonna you know help monitor this situation well a mm -hmm. woman slid in there and she grabbed my hand and she wasn't gonna let go until i <laughs> uh did something else and i didn't mm -hmm. know what that was <clears throat> and he had to physically remove her from the place oh, wow, <laughs> wow. And guys you know it was a shock to me. I, mm -hmm. I don't my my ego being what it is. It's 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 kind of made out of stone, not rubber. Well, these were the days before the internet. It's not like you could see how popular. All you heard is how popular the show was. You didn't couldn't right. go on and see right. message boards of people talking about you or sharing fic pictures of you or anything. There were rudimentary. There were there were there were rudimentary message boards back then, and I I did go on there to, to find out that I was way more popular than I did <laughs> for, 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 for walking out there on, on Nikita and uttering like seven lines of dialogue or five words of dialogue. Well, I feel like that would have went straight to my head, that's for sure. Oh, uh, well, you know what? If it stays in your head, your head gets fucked up. That's fair. That's fair. You gotta let it go. Let it out. Yeah, let it out. It's funny, your character's name is how I have to tell people how my name is pronounced. It's like, it's like Davenport. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Davenport. <laughs> Think that just get yeah. rid of the port. All right, Dad, yeah, get rid of the port. There was a real cop show on here, another sort of along the line of, of, of um, uh, top cops that uh, Al Waxman uh, produced, and oh, yeah. it was about real RCMP officers. And I played an RCMP officer, and I swear to God, this was his real name Peter Organ. <laughs> I've met some organs before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> there's a guy i met one day um i was at a party when i was younger and he said he's like hey, this is my friend kyle cock and i was like what and he goes kyle cock his last name is c-o-c-k i made him show me his driver's license that was his last name <laughs> as long as he showed you just his license you're yeah that's right yeah, i just i just need the license that's funny okay i believe you no put it away yeah, that's good it's good <laughs> more proof yeah <laughs> all right Dad, so what do you got i heard you also went out up for the role of wolverine and of course, Cal got. Yeah, there. man, Cal and I were um, neck and neck for that. We were neck. How would neck. your Wolverine have been different? Would it have been very much like the Cable voice, or? I I thought he'd be growly. You know, I took I took on I I probably did exactly what Cal did. Only Cal just lent that musicality that he has to it, and and I was just probably just a little too forthright, uh, just trying to be scary. Mm -hmm. uh, Cal and I have similar voices. Cal and I both sing. Uh, Cal's voice is a little, a little more baritone than mine. I'm a little less controlled in my baritone, unless I have to be. Hmm. All Cal's got is a baritone, but fuck what a baritone! Hmm. Well, he's a great singer. Here's the thing about that. Let, let me let me just tell you where I had a victory over Cal, if I may. <laughs> well, yeah, let's hear it. My dad, the rock star. <clears throat> okay, that was the story of um, Gene Simmons came up with from Kiss, the animated series. Mm -hmm. Cal and I went out for that. Cal went into the audition and sang because he knows how to sing. And I went in and did I did a I did a dis dissipated stoned rock star voice. You know, <laughs> I know it was for kids, but it was, yeah, Willie, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and I did that stuff, and I got hired. 
And then I said, well, my agent came back with, you, you got you got my dad the rock star. I said, yeah, but Cal Dodd and a few other actors I knew who sang went out for it. And I said, and, and I wasn't known as a singer, but I'd been in a band since I was 14. I said, yeah, I'll take the role if I get to sing. And they went, oh, no, we've got somebody else for that. I said, fuck you. I either get the role with the singing or I don't want it. Mm -hmm. They go to Mr. Simmons himself. And they oh, wow. say, uh, dude, dude wants to sing. And Gene said, put him in a fucking studio, make him sing. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this tricks guitarist comes down. I worked with him on a Rolaids ad. The guy walks in <laughs> and he's got, no, this guy's a, a guitar maestro, man. Yeah. He's got a little amp. He drags it beside him and he's got a million effects pedals. He's already got, and he plays. And so I, I, I did rock and roll all night and party every day. And they sent it back to Gene. And then I got it. And every song you ever hear sung on My Dad the Rockstar is me singing. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And it's, they're all Kiss tunes? No, no, no. They're all, no, no. Come on. No, they'd be original things. I don't think the show could probably <laughs> afford it. In the ladies room. Come on. It's a kid's commercial. Yeah. You know, okay, okay, yeah. Fair enough. Fair and, enough. And, well, oh, listen, I, didn't even, I didn't even get away with a, an improv I wanted to do with that. And I got, I got away with improvs on that show. Oh, excellent. I got away. With, I got away with doing some improvs, but there was one where I go um, fishing with my son Willie, who is brilliantly played by Joanne Vanicola. Uh, they're amazing, and so I, I'm, I'm, we're fishing, and I fall into the water, and all of a sudden I, <laughs> I'm out of the water because there's crabs attached to me, and what I said was not crabs again. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't let me have that one. Oh, oh no. Yeah. It's it almost sneaked by there, that one. It's a good yeah. it's a kid's cartoon. But I did 56 episodes of that with Don Franks, Joanne Vanicola. Um, I'm not remembering your names, but a brilliant cast for, for a year, every week. And that's yeah. fun. Is that one ensemble? or? Yeah. Yeah. We were on it almost was, eh? all the time. Yeah. No, yeah. I think almost all the time. I think that was... That might have been the last ensemble thing I actually ever did. After that, it all just became, you know, boring. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, uh, boring because I liked ensemble. I mean, I don't mind hearing my own voice. I love the sound of my own voice. But when you get <laughs> in a studio with people of talent and people of commitment and people of humor, I, I think it just ups your game. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, agreed. When you you like music, I, I, right? yeah, yeah you you've been on you, you can be on stage with people and if they're just a sink of energy sometimes some people raise others up and some people some people bring them down. I have so, been on uh, I've been on stage with both. Yes, me too. I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. I think. I mean, I hear horror stories from other people, and I don't have many. I really don't. No. I mean, I don't. I don't have a horror story so horrible to um to share with you. I mean, I really don't. No, you know, generally, if you by the time you do, you know, so many months of rehearsal to get to, to get to your production, it's you got to most of the the kinks are ironed out usually. Well, um, yeah, or or you're just gonna go. This is how it's gonna go. Fucking yeah. buck up and do it. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to go. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's one. Um, well, I'm, I got to say, I've been listening to um, 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 your band. Um, uh, um, Give me a second. Uh, uh, damned uh, front uh, machine. Uh, 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 damn, yeah, no, it's 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 some S damned device. Simple. No, it's simple, simple damn device. device. Sorry simple about that. I, I should have remembered that because simple's in my band name too. But that was that's our connection. Uh, where um, where have you been listening to that on YouTube? There's a couple of tracks there, but I don't. Uh... It's on, you're on Spotify too. Get the fuck out! Really? Apple Music. Yeah, that's what I was playing. listening to. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder who's getting the you money. Get, like, <laughs> Spotify. Well, uh, apparently, what is it? Someone, I think someone has to listen to your song sixty times for you to make a, a, a to make a, a dime. Penny. Yeah, or like a penny. I think it is. So, uh, send me a, uh, yeah. an Indian nickel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's fascinating to me. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, I mean, Simple Damn Device has been defunct for a while. Yeah. Um, based on. I, I only get along with the collaborator on that, Kevin. He's the guitarist. But I'm in a new band now. And this is some funky, weird shit, man. Oh, nice. I was looking around. I was looking around, and um, I, a call from the past, a friend I've known since high school called and said, 
hey man you want to come out and sing with us uh, you know check us out and stuff and 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 i said okay what's the name of your band and without a word of a lie the name of the band is 11 11 no oh. it's a sign mm. <laughs> 11 11 <laughs> i went out and bought a 400 dollar vocal pedal today just to go to this show first time to see them that's awesome. I'm 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 I'm, wow. I'm actually that confident that we're going to do some stuff. So oh, that's, that's I don't awesome. believe in signs that if I did, that would be one of them. Well, you know what? I I don't believe in the eleven eleven shit either. Wow. To be quite honest. Come on, it man. makes a good story. It makes no, a good story. Rock, I, I love a good story, that's and true. you know, if I was a nineteen year old boy uh, still trying to pick up girls, I I I stoke that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sixteen. Everyone's a believer at nineteen. That's true. <laughs> Well, I yeah. see. I see you got to work on. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm a huge fan of the graphic novel. You worked on Essex County this past year. Yeah, uh, that was a big... short day. It was a short day. I I, 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 I didn't get to do much. Um, I, I like Essex County. I looked it up afterwards. I didn't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I got the part, and it was literally, you know, half an hour's work. That's awesome. hard for me. That's hard for me with fans who really yeah. like what I've done, and I don't. I don't remember. Or, oh, that's or, fair. No, that's fine. I, it's can't, just... I can't pull the same significance from it as they do. I mean, the right, like the comic is kind of, you know, I feel like Jeff Lemire is one of our greatest Canadian comic writers, I'd say. It's uh, that and, um, I mean, that show Sweet Tooth on Netflix is based on one of his books as well, which I deeply, I love the comic and the uh, the show's good too. So it's just, it's it's cool that they, uh, you know, they're, they're, they take one of his first books. I think that was like his first big book. And, you got to uh, look for a red ketchup out there. Red Ketchup is an animated thing. Just got put on um, Teletoon in both French and English, and I'm I'm part of that. Do you do the French and English for my voices? <laughs> I do the <laughs> voices. And my, my agent, Carrie, to go back there, very fluent in French, hears me talk French and goes, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Please, no. Don't speak where do French. Cree does that? Where is this red ketchup show at? It looks amazing. Just punch it in, you'll find it. Oh um, no, I found the trailer on IDB. It looks I'm, amazing. I'm the uh, I'm the I'm the dissolute, drunken, petter assed Russian <laughs> father. Oh, perfect. And I also play the, I also play the Pope on it. And, and, oh, beautiful. And, uh, it's, it's 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 fucking lovely and ugly and deadly I, I i do like it i get you know a little bit of the adult stuff every now and then mm -hmm. but in the last uh last three months i've been doing a lot of indigenous elder stuff for mm -hmm. you know cartoons aimed at four to ten year olds mm -hmm. and i love doing that too because mm -hmm. it's a challenge for the director because <laughs> <Right? laughs> i'm like Ugh! and they go no no Okay, <laughs> and then you know, but some of them are also indigenous accents that I've you know I've banked over the years that I I, I love bringing out. I was going to say, do you do you feel like are you com comfortable doing like something that would be seemingly a stereotypical like indigenous accent? Do you feel like that's something? Ooh, I've got directors at the other end of the line who are indigenous who are directing me. If they thought I was being stereotypical, they'd slap my dick down. Oh, man. good, excellent. So, no, I'm happy no. to hear that. No, no, they're, no I... they're the ones. They're the ones who say a little softer there, you know, and a little, little, little back in the palate more. And oh, um, yeah. oh good. No, good. And, and I and I research them. I researched them because, I mean, it's a, it's it's definitely a question of love for me to, mm -hmm. to get indigenous characters right, especially when I'm communicating to children. Yeah, I was gonna say like I assume as, as just someone that's I assume like most people that belong to any kind of a, a culture like that that um, representation in media is important. So being able to contribute to that uh, must be very rewarding. It it is, and mm -hmm. you know, I love the duality triplality quadrality <laughs> of my life yeah. where i'm allowed to be you know profane and loud and then I'm, I'm i'm i have to pull it in to remember you know my humanity and and i helped raise my uh, well i actually raised my younger brothers for about a period of about seven years mm -hmm. and so you know communicating with children i'm a children's advocate like mm -hmm. fierce man excellent if I want to swear and do all this other shit too, I'll tell you where I get really nasty, and that's if you if you mess with kids. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> right there I hope so. You. I hope so, man. Do you have children of your own? Oh, yeah. 
I do not have children of my own. I will tell you why, because I recognized the profane and the nasty when I was 24 mm -hmm. and the nomadic life I wanted to lead as an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, as, like I said, I was reading at five. So some some thoughts occurred to me maybe that should have occurred to some of my friends growing up mm -hmm. when they got, mm -hmm. you know, kids when they were 17 and 18. Yeah. Now, yeah, all yeah, of them, good. almost all of them to a fault have been fantastic parents. And I'd like to think I had something to do with it because whenever they sort of get angry or, you know, seem negligent, I'm the first one down their necks about it. Yeah, good. But I, myself, no. I'm a better uncle than a dad, man. Yeah. I, I get that feeling, too. Like wait till you're already ancient and then have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I love that, that ancient thing. I, I mean, uh, I'm 62 years old. I have the libido of a 19-year-old. I have the heart of a five-year-old, and I keep that in a lucite block on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I always said the same thing. I think I'd be a better uncle than a dad, but unfortunately, I don't think my bro. I think my brother's thinking the same thing because he hasn't had any kids either. So, I guess that I guess we're both we're both holding. Out I don't worry, my one. baby girls will call you Uncle Andre. How's that? That sounds good. <laughs> and Uncle Lawrence now. Hey, call me Uncle Lawrence. Yeah, Uncle Lawrence, of course, of course, I'm Uncle. Not Lawrence. weird, Uncle. I'm the fierce. Uncle. <laughs> Uncle. Yeah. Right, the uncle that more. takes daddy o drinking. We're gonna be have best, 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 best kind. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, I got more. Go for it. Go. <laughs> um, well, here's something. Um I, I I haven't heard of your new band, of course, but um Simple Damn Design I got I enjoyed quite a bit. And as Andre's pointed out, I'm a bit of a music snob. So uh, <laughs> he is. Yeah, I am. Um but it's like it's interesting. It's almost like the B fifty twos and like the Stone Temple Pilots were thrown in a blender. What? I gotta like, listen to this. You, you, I got a cryptic <laughs> message from Davin today that just said simple damn design list ways to go get into simple damn design. Hey, oh, 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 first of all, fellas, it's yeah. simple damned device. Yeah, oh, device. Device. Sorry. And I've always seen it. Butcher in that a, band name tonight. We called it, we called it, we always called what we were doing rhythm and bruise. Oh, I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our, uh, my lyrics are pretty hard and they're all my lyrics. Okay. They're all, they're all my thing. I don't write love songs. I, I write songs about why the fuck are people in love? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. I write songs about, about, you know, children's rights in, in their own fierce way. Um, and I write songs about being lost, lost. Because when you're sitting down and you're writing and you're thinking, I don't know anything about how people think, but I think I know about how people feel. This sounds like I, a lyric itself. I, it, it isn't. We're talking to a poet. You have to talk <laughs> to a poet. Yeah, yeah am, please do. It's a good line. I remember though. Well, poetry, um, my favorite. You've got poem. some of your poetry as well, and you definitely got uh, it's a poetic simple. voice. It's simple. It's simple. It all starts with trust. So much love you don't feel the knife thrust deep till you're suddenly bleeding, choking, crying, begging, pleading. It was you that jumped on this happy wagon. Now in a bag, your heart, your dragon, home where you probably should have stayed in the first place. Then you wouldn't be wearing such a long face. Hey, man, why are you looking so confused? You've just been loved and left and used. Kind of like getting mugged while being seduced, but staying alone at home only makes it worse. Soon you quote that Bachelor chapter in verse. Gonna stay in and watch the game. I'm not going out. I don't need the pain, but the outside has a way of getting in all the same until it fills the room and it finds you, throws your clothes at you, reminds you that if you stay in again, to begin again only gets harder and they're all getting smarter and the years are just stealing by. It's time to start healing. Never surrender, but remember that feeling that you had in the teenage when you were a clean page, running, jumping, crashing, burning, cramming a life in and all the time learning. Nothing important because it all fucking mattered and then you discovered the lie and it shattered. Santa, the elves, the TV family, mama's little angel was an unplanned pregnancy, daddy's always saying you got something to prove you said fuck all that and you made your move into the city where it claimed you for one of its own you got a car a space you carry a phone but when you check for messages nothing after the tone too late you learned there is no place like home dorothy uh, very nice oh Thanks, man. man 
That's yeah. awesome. I can't that's believe really I got awesome. through that. I that's haven't fantastic. said that in about five years. I can't believe I got through that. Wow. That's been amazing. I liked that it was to the tune of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Shit, <laughs> 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 <Get>, man. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> My ear catches all. Hopefully, all, <laughs> hopefully, all you get from Will Smith is a cease and desist letter. Yeah, I'll slap him well, in the face if I ever see him on a stage. There you go. Oh, I got man. my money on Lawrence. Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, oh, dude. Yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah, I know the album's on Apple Music. I just added it to my playlist. So, Jesus uh, Christ. Right so there. go on YouTube as well and then punch in Lawrence Bain issue. Um, Lawrence Bain uh, on YouTube. There's there's songs there. Some of them are live. And uh, one of them I just got out of the hospital after collapsing the night before with chest pains that were not heart related. Don't know. Just fell down. And then really? I, was on stage, I was on stage at Lee's Palace the next day. Hmm. And I was sort of sitting in the chair because one of my legs was still kind of numb. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know, man. But I like I'm in the I'm in the peak of health, and you know, like I said, I, I like other people. I, the I don't, it's the I, cheese and the whiskey. It's keeping you going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are some of your musical influences? Well, lots and lots. As a kid growing up, I mean, I, I hung out with a, a largely black family and black friends, and so a lot of R and B at the beginning. Randy Jackson. Clay Jackson, Steve Lee, fantastic people, and and music was uh, we'd listen to a, a a radio station that would come in from Buffalo late at night on the skip, and so there was R and B that they weren't playing in Toronto. Then in 1977, I was gobsmacked by two albums, Asia by Steely Dan, mm -hmm. because those are some fucking fierce hard lyrics. I thought you were going to say the band Asia. I was going to say incredible. That's Oh, my God. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that's surprising. I punched this guy. <laughs> yeah. I said I thought. I, like, I was surprised. I was like, oh, Asia? Okay. Please, please lose that thought and let me finish. Right. Okay. So you got <laughs> Asia by Steely Dan that lyrically is among their filthiest, darkest, so wonderfully couched lyrics, which made me a lyric, lyricist. And then... In that same year, and this is hard to believe for some people, never mind the bollocks. Oh, text pistols. They came out in the same year, and I was gone, man. I was going to write like both of them. I was going to be in a band that sounded like both of them. And I think that's, if you listen to Simple Damn Device, I think that's yeah. who we sound like a little more yeah, than, that you works. know. Yeah, you know, um, I, I love the lyrics of both. I mean, John Lydon, quick, uh, quick humble brag, went into a bar in, 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 in Yorkville, Toronto, and there was John Lydon sitting there. I said, I love you, man. He goes, fuck off. And I, I said, and buy you a pint. He goes, yeah, fuck off and buy me a pint. So, <laughs> sat down, got about 15 the man minutes, and go away. <laughs> got about 50 minutes of his time. Oh, good. And That's now, and, and now, and now I got to, now I got to sell this story to you because this is true too. Four in the morning, I am walking down Young Street, Toronto. No idea why. No, no, no concept as to how completely messed up I am. And I roll into Fran's Restaurant, which is a college in Young. And at the back, sitting in a two-person booth, is Iggy Pop. Oh, my God. And I'm walking back there, and I don't know who he is, man. I don't is know he who wear, he is. Was he wearing a shirt? For an embarrassing the same thing. Time. I don't know who he is for an embarrassingly long time. I walk back and I'm looking back and he goes, hey man, come and sit down with me. I got invited. I sit down. I look across and go, holy fuck, Ziggy Pop. Because <laughs> I'm stoned out of my mind too. Mm -hmm. And we sat there for two hours and talked about I don't know what. Because you'd have to hypnotize me to get it back. <laughs> but I sat, I'd have to, I sat and talked with Ziggy Pop for two hours. And my oh, last rock star awesome. appearance, I was in England and I was in a punk pub. And who was sitting in the corner? Jeff Beck. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And I sat and talked with him. Holy crap. Those are my rock stars, man. Yeah. Those, those, well, of, of the ones you got, you got some pretty big ones. That's amazing. I uh, know. Iggy's God to me, man. Iggy's, mm. Iggy's, Iggy's rule of uh, lyric writing is 25 words. 
25 words. That's I'm, all you write. I'm scanning through his songs. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't fuck around, man. Oh, yeah. man, his latest one, his latest one is just savage. Savage stuff. Still, Iggy's still here. Iggy is like on par with Keith Richards for, you know, longevity. Longevity. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll see who it'll be interesting to see who live lasts longer between them. Let's take bets. Twenty five dollars says says Keith lasts longer than Iggy. Yeah, I, I, I'm not taking that. I don't. There's something going on there with Keith Richards. I don't know what it is, but I'm not betting against it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no. I think he's I think he's like a genie of some sort that just you know has been out of his his lamp for too long. Yes, he's a dark gin. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I saw him live twice, and I was trying to figure it out. I'm just like, I need this secret. I want to. Listen. It's like a hologram. He's it's been dead for 20 years. They just keep going <laughs> holograms. That's that the secret. That would be fascinating. If him and the Paul him. McCartney hologram hang out on weekends. <laughs> Turns out Mick was never real. He was always yeah, a an actor. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he's a shitty actor. Come on. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Keith's in his music videos, Keith's a better actor. <laughs> I loved him. And I loved him. And you know what? Apparently, a better singer. Uh, oh man, I have every. Keith, you know, and Keith Richards has a golden Keith voice. Song. It's it's just straight, fucking hurting blues, lazy, drunken, high blues. But his notes, perfect, mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Mick doesn't sing. Mick 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 yells. Mick yells. Mick yeah. growls. Uh, if you want the best Mick, you're gonna have to listen to Black and Blue. Mm -hmm. Black and blue is the best Mick. I don't know. It's 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 transcendental Mick. Wherever he is, he's very happy in that moment. Fantastic album, Black and Blue. It's my well, favorite. They were they kind of started as a blues band mostly, didn't they? It was like no, well, like, of course they 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 started Alex Corner's Blues Club in 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 England, and all they wanted to do was blues, and all yeah. they wanted to do was covers, and then yeah. you know all of a sudden it was Keith going, no, come on, let's write a fucking song. Yeah, you know, but it, it never strays far away. But if you listen to "Get Off My Cloud," mm. that's the birth of punk. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the birth of punk. Fucking Charlie's machine gun drums. No, it's it's fantastic. I mean, when I play that song real loud, it could have been done by the Clash yesterday. Ah, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. That's awesome. Oh well, yeah, you're right there with the yelling too. Like he's really yelling it. Hey, you get off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very and, and it's even, even, yeah, it's even the lyrics too. Fuck you. Get off yeah. my cloud. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. very in your face. And uh what's the other one? He does. Oh, the queen is bravely shouting. What the hell is going on? Oh, I can't remember the song, but it's way back there. And they were punk, man, like mm -hmm. before the word, before the the idea. Yeah, well, even like you just listen to mix, like even in Paint of Black, and so like the you know towards the end when it gets into the, the screaming repeaty part, it's very it's very punk, like even you know. Well, he doesn't sing. He rarely sings, no. and when he's when he's tried, it's been embarrassing to be quite. <laughs> yeah, you kind of pick your lane and stay in it, right? Okay, one 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 exception: Wild Horses. Yeah, that's true. Wild Horse is something something uh -huh. that he was able to grasp there. I feel like Angie the... Angie has a little bit of a melodic a melodic uh, yeah. little bit. It. I'd like to hear a raw track of him singing that without without That would be you know, yeah, that would be cool. It, it I just... Yeah, I don't think it would last. <laughs> Angie. Angie. <laughs> Oh, when it gets to the never meant to make you cry. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess it does get into the uh, Yeah. Uh, it's pretty funny. Affect. It's more like it's breathing. Affect. Kind of, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah. it's it's amazing to me. that Because love has to carry you through once you hit a certain age. Like, you have to love doing music to be in your 70s, getting into 80, and still wanting to go out and do it on stage almost every well, night with that band. Like, you have to. You can't tell me. I always say... You look at these guys like Elon Musk or whatever. They got more money than like, or Putin, for instance. He's probably the richest man in the world. Like you have more money than anything. You could do anything you want in the world. You could stay in the six star hotels every night. You could fly anywhere, live in Australia for a year. It doesn't matter. Like it's a drop in the bucket to the amount of money you have so much so that you wouldn't even probably notice it on a balance sheet to do that when you're that rich. But why would you still go do anything? Like why, when you're that rich, would you, why wouldn't you just live? Like, Passion. Yeah, I think passion. it's a power. Power. Well, for for artists, I think it's passion. For people like Putin or whatever, I think it's a power thing. But for... I keep hoping. I keep hoping that I'm going to win the big lottery. Mm -hmm. 
and I have the, I have the billboard set up and it'll be at about four strategic places in Toronto where I know people I know <laughs> will see it. Yep. And it'll be me on a surfboard on a wave of money, dollar <laughs> bills, I love it. naked yeah. with the finger behind me <laughs> yep. like and I'll never work again. Yep. I, because I love, I, and then you'll have to call me back for passion. Yeah. Because other than that, I'm going to get me an island in Northern Ontario mm -hmm. for one. And then mm -hmm. not, even, or, not even tropical. Just going to Northern no, Ontario. No, man, yeah. Northern Ontario. Excuse me. I was That's a Boy true. Scout in Toronto and I, mm -hmm. and I love Northern Ontario. And then the I'll ones with no there. black flies though. Oh, uh, come on, man. Don't go during Black Fly. You're a fucking millionaire. Why would you go? <laughs> you have a Black Fly net around your house. You're a millionaire. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll, dome, I'll dome the whole island. <laughs> and then out where you are, I'd get one on the shore. Not BC. I won't go there. But I'd come out to your way and get one because I have friends out there. And I'd, I'd I can the, wild, some good spots. the wildness of that out yeah. there. The, the, it's a wilder ocean. It's it's. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it and then, and then, you know, right here in Toronto, at the top of a really big building, a completely glass enclosed penthouse. Yep. And then you'll never hear from me again, mm. unless you want me to do something <laughs> that arouses my passion. Next. And that's that's a dream for me. Yeah. Also, the, the the northern the the northern thing was getting an island and building a roller coaster on it, <laughs> where you actually yeah you have to come in to the dock and oh, I don't care who you are you got to get on the roller coaster. Yeah, the way to get to your house is on the roller and coaster. By the way, by the way, <laughs> if you've noticed, if you get off the roller coaster, there are lions and bears that I've put there. <laughs> <laughs> This is quite the but you got quite the Bond villain island to set up oh. here. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to be up there helping mankind, you know. You got like you got like a solid white jumpsuit with a little scar through your eye, just stroking the cat. <laughs> Man, yeah, I am the, cat. the whole time. That's um, no, there's no clothes. I'm like, hey, welcome to my house. What you don't like this? Leave. Yeah, oh, much way, more. you have to take the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, the only way out is the same roller coaster you came in on. <laughs> Are you wearing anything under that cat? No. I, 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 the hat? Yes, of course I'm wearing. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, the roller coaster back stops 20 feet before the boat, so you got to run through the lions and the bears to get yeah, out. Yeah, no, no, it goes real slow. <laughs> goes real slow at times where you do see the lions and the, yeah. the bears. And where the, where the, where the silverback gorilla might get you. And, and of course, you know, speakers, speakers everywhere, you know, sending out horrible sounds. No, I, 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 need you to, I, need, I just need you to arrive at my door all the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to if you're going to if you're going to be rich, you're going to be poor, you're going to be my friend, you're going to be a new guest. You're all arriving at my door with the shit scared out of you. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> way to go. I feel, I feel like you could achieve that in your day-to-day -day life. You don't you need to be a millionaire to do that. Uh, I, I, I do I do all right with the, the, the local oh, good. people. Excellent. I feel I feel like I want to I want to go to the Lawrence Bain haunted house that's gonna uh, at Halloween. It sounds like it'd be a real fun time. Fun time. Somehow yep. the Jehovah's will still make it <laughs> to your door though. But only the toughest that have to be really tough. Yeah. Okay, sure. this is the last story I'm gonna tell you, and it has to all do right. with Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. I'm locked uh, in. We're having a. I lived in several party houses growing up. Okay, there were like, well, not growing up. I just lived in several party houses. I haven't grown up, but either way, I'm with like seven people living in this house. Four guys, three girls. We, it's very intermingling and all that shit. And um, one morning we look out and we see the Jehovah's Witnesses are making their way up the street towards our house. We decide to all strip off. <laughs> at the door the two girls in the house open the door buck and it, and the poor stammering young boys in their <laughs> little suits their little their little ties like oh, and, no. and, 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 and then guys coming up behind them equally nude one of them even managed he even managed to look aroused and came and said, come on, honey, come back into the house like this. And that's, you know, those guys lost their minds that day. <laughs> you probably helped them. Maybe, yeah. maybe it awoken something. I'd like to think I did. <laughs> but 
<laughs> no, I prefer to think I didn't. I prefer to think that they went home and forsook their God. Yes, yeah, that's and right. Went, and they went, yeah. I'm going, I'm going to California. I'm going back I, to that house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, that's me. I'm drained, boys. All right. Well, if you got, right. I'll, give you, I'll give you two more if you got them. Devin, yeah, what do you got? Because I'm yeah, uh, I got a couple of rapid Lord fires. Why not? Time, so, right. Rapid fire, and yeah. I'll give you rapid fire we answers. I promise. It. All right. Did you happen to see Josh Brolin's portrayal of Cable, and what did you think? Yep. Great. Uh, <laughs> if you could time travel, time slide, any place in time, where would it be? 1979. Oh, good year. Oh, 1979. Solid year. Go back and listen to those albums while they were still pretty fresh. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought I had one more. Okay, um, well, my last question was how much? Because yeah, yeah. right now we're we're watching the uh, the four parter at the end of season four. The um, uh -huh. we watched the first episode that sets up the Beyond Good and Evil. So uh, which in, you know introduces all the stuff. Uh, how much do you get to voice act with the actor that does Apocalypse's voice? Yes, I you did. Guys, well, how much fun was On that? On Coast. Yeah, John, that, that book. Listen, man, there's a bar in Toronto. They'll make this quick because I was just there yesterday. There's a bar in Toronto called Poppers. Mm -hmm. John Colicos, that's where I met him. John Colicos was always a good, was a very good friend of August Schellenberg, who was my spiritual father and an amazing actor. There's a plaque in Poppers that says his name and his birth and death. And I, every time. Oh, that's sweet. Awesome. Well, what Remember my last question because it's Andre's favorite question. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> oh, man, that, that that shifts every now and then, but right now, Ex Machina. Oh, good choice. Okay. Hmm. I'm a big Fucking fan of that direct. First of all, amazing soundtrack. Amazing soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Alicia fucking Vikander. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah. She's gorgeous and she's subtle. And her talent, it wasn't robotic. Like, I was expecting, mm -hmm. oh, good, you know what? Almost anybody can pull off a half-android voice, uh, you know, if you surround them with enough CGI. But she brought yep. something even. And o Oscar Isaac, you know, fantastic actor. And and, and Gleason. No, 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 the whole thing was great. And it was filmed in one of my favorite places, Iceland. So, you know. Uh -huh. And I know I, I loved the film. I loved the Frankensteinian. You know, tip of the hat to Mary Shelley. I mm -hmm. loved. Yeah, uh, I right now I just kind of watched that. Fantastic. Now, if you want, have you get seen his other movies? Who? What? Uh, what the, movie? the director Alex Garland. He did um, Annihilation, the one with Natalie Portman. Oh, it's a terrible movie. Yeah, I didn't like terrible. that one. No, not uh, at all. Not at all. He, Fucking overweening, overwrought. And where are the actors? Mm. No, I'm sorry. Nope, didn't like it. Yeah. Anything else? What else did you do? Uh, men that came out this past year. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, haven't uh, seen it's it. it's it's kind of it's like a woman that goes to this small British uh, town, and uh, all the men are played by the same actor. It's um it's oh, interesting. Okay. Um, they they're all very different design, but it's it's sort of about you know toxic masculinity, I guess, more than anything. But uh, uh, he also wrote the uh, script for Dread. He wrote the script for twenty. He wrote the script for twenty eight days later. And uh, and also wrote the script for Dread, the Carl okay, Urban. Twenty eight days later is fabulous, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's oh, a really good writer. He's classic, oh, good, fabulous. And no, well, the director brought Twenty Eight Days Later to the. Come on, Danny Boyle, uh, yeah, Danny Boyle, mm -hmm. and 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 the effects on that. And there's the other Gleason, right? Brendan Gleason, who I uh, love. Dom, yeah, Brendan, yeah, yeah. Dom now was in it, but yeah, Brendan, son, yeah. absolutely. Fabulous actor. Hmm. I love talking. Yeah, his, to we can go on. A oh, I, I, I could too. Uh, I love the Banshees of Inisherin. Have you seen that? The one that uh, I just watched it. I, I did it for research for an Irish voice that I, I was coming up with, and it, it uh -huh. needed to be real rural Irish. And, yeah, that's uh, a good uh, one for that. Oh, fantastic! I fit yeah. and, and and heartbreaking. Man, it was heartbreaking. Oh. I've I've seen very few. I've seen a lot of breakup movies. I've not seen a lot of breakup friendship movies, and that one is an amazing job of it. Um, it, it really people don't, well, it's not it's not it's not saleable. Uh, you know, yeah. buddy movies are supposed to be about we break up all the way through it, but we love each other. 
But yeah. but the idea of starting movies with "fuck you," I don't want to be around you anymore, and then mm-hmm. trying to recoup that through the whole thing and failing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Movie. It's a. Uh, well, I, if you I ever want to seen... chat movies for three hours, you're welcome to come on my movie podcast anytime <laughs> yeah. you like. They do. I'm that there, is a long man. Way. I'm there. Uh, I'm it there. is long. Uh, all right, sweet. Well, you get to pick so a much, movie Lawrence. that we watch it's been as well. Amazing. <laughs> uh, this has been an awesome, insane. man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, this has yeah, been a real pleasure. Really we look forward to hearing your voice in whatever whatever version it is in season two. Mm-hmm. Of, uh, yeah, wait, oh, yeah, when, I can't when wait. you identify it, give me a call. because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because once people out there identify it, then maybe I can say, yeah, that's me. But right uh-huh. now? All right. I'm going to be will. looking. I'm, I'm, I'm very waiting. curious now. All right. Thanks man. a lot. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet Thanks. you. Good night. Take care. Sign me off. <laughs> One, two, three.